Thank you for joining me once again, still on our Arima modeling series. This video covers step two, estimation. I have taken step one in the previous video, so I'll be looking at how we are going to estimate all the selected models and from then pick the most appropriate Arima model. It is important that you watch these two prerequisite videos before you watch this video on estimation. Now, drawing from our first video on identification, these are the six tentative models that we are able to pick from the plot of the ACF and the PACF. So that means we are going to estimate six tentative models. Arima 111, 112, 113, 311, 312, and 313. The explanations on how we came about these six tentative models have already been given in my model on the identification. So I will not be repeating. So now let us move on to Stata and estimate these six models. In my usual practice, I have my log file on to track all I'm going to do. My variables are here in the variables domain. My do file is already with all the codes I'm going to run for this estimation procedure. And we are now using the different PPI, not the raw PPI, because we're able to show under identification that the raw PPI is non-stationary. So the different PPI is what we are using for the ARIMA model and it's in first difference. So now we are about to execute the estimation procedure and you can see the command here ARIMA DPPI which is a difference series and this is the code. Remember that we are using the first difference of the series. So that is where the one is. So we have AR1, first difference and MA1. After that, I'm going to run this command istatic to obtain the Akaka information criterion and the Bayesian information criterion. So I'm highlighting these two codes and execute. So here we have the results from the Arima 111 uh, regression. And remember that the essence of this is for us to run all the six models and identify the most appropriate. So, but to do that, I will just give you a simple interpretation, even though interpreting is not um may not make any intuitive sense at this point but in case you want to know how to interpret your arima model you can look at uh, the significant coefficients and interpret if the coefficient is not significant then there is no point interpreting it so here we have a significance ar the first lag and the ma is also significant so for the ar term you can simply say that the past lag of the PPI can positively predict its future occurrence. That is, the past realization of the PPI will have a positive influence on PPI at the 1% level. Also, for the uh, MA process, you can see, you can also say that the residual, the lag of the residual will negatively predict PPI at the 1% level. You can see here is negative and statistically significant at the 1% level. Remember that the MA component of this model is a residual, the lag of the residual. And by running the eStat IC command, I'm able to generate the AIC and the BIC. All this will be used in selecting the most appropriate model. So the next thing is to execute Arima 112 and obtain the AIC and the BIC statistics execute this and here we have the results for arima 112 you can see here the ar the first lag of the ar term is significant while the ma terms are not significant and here we have the result for the aic and the bic and the log likelihood so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to highlight the remaining codes and just run it and give you my explanations later execute all this so all the codes have been executed, so let me explain them one after the other. This is for ARIMA 113, and here is the results. We can see here, for ARIMA 113, the lag for the AR term is significant, while for the MA term, we have two of the coefficients significant, and here we have the AIC and the BIC. The next is ARIMA 311, that's the fourth model. This is the result for ARIMA 311, where we have three lags of the AR components, out of which two of its coefficients are significant 
while for the MA component is not significant at all. And below it, you have the AIC and the BIC statistics. The next model is 312, ARIMA 312, 3 AR terms and 2 MA terms. And this is the result. For the AR term, out of 3 coefficients, only 1 is significant, while for the MA term, none is significant. And below you have the AIC and the BIC. And lastly, we have the ARIMA 313. And this is the result. For the ARIMA 313, all the components of the AR and MA terms are all significant. You can see here, they are all statistically significant in the model. And below you have the AIC and the BIC. Like I said, I have extracted the salient features of these results to PowerPoint from where I will show you how you can determine the most applicable. Now, we have executed all these three models. How do you know which of the model is the most appropriate. You can see here four ways by which you can know, four things to look out for. The most appropriate model should have the most significant coefficients. It must have the lowest volatility. It must have the highest log likelihood statistic. And it must have the lowest AIC and the SBIC. Let me take you back to one of the results. Let me take you back to the last result, which is 313. If you look at the 313, all the coefficients here are statistically significant. Sigma here is the coefficient for volatility, sigma. And here you have the AIC criterion. So these are the salient features I extracted from each of this model. So neatly put in a tabular form are the results from the six estimated models. And remember the yastic I just showed you before, you have to select that model that has the highest significant coefficients, the model with the lowest volatility, the model with the highest log likelihood, and the model with the lowest AIC and SBIC. Looking at all these six models, we can see that ARIMA 313 qualifies as the most ideal or appropriate model. So I'm going to color code this now to green. So again, ARIMA 313 has the highest number of significant coefficients. The volatility element is the lowest. It has the highest log likelihood. You can see there's a negative sign here. So this is the highest log likelihood. Also the AIC is the lowest and the SBIC is also the lowest. So these are the yastics by which you can select the most appropriate or ideal ARIMA model. So I will conclude by saying that the fundamental idea of the Box Jenkins methodology is that of parsimony. Parsimonious models will always produce better results than overparameterized models. If you have too many variables, they will consume degrees of freedom, especially when those variables contribute little to the significance of the dependent variable. In, for instance, let's go back to the chosen model of ARIMA 313. Yes, it has the highest number of coefficients, but these regressors are contributing to the significance of the dependent variable. It means that these regressors are not redundant. It's a different thing when you have too many regressors and they are redundant. That is, they are not statistically relevant in explaining the dependent variable. But that is not the case with our ARIMA 313 model. If you have too many variables, the goodness of fit of the model, yes, it will improve with an increasing R squared. But such a model is penalized with a reducing adjusted R squared, which if care is not taken may tilt towards zero. And if there are too many relevant variables in the model, you may even end up having a negative R squared. Lastly, Fitting an ARIMA model to a data series, like I said before, is more of an art than of science. Two people can look at the same data and they will come up with similar but different ARIMA models. Step two is done, estimation. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with step three, which is diagnostic checking. I will always encourage you to read up textbooks. Please do not substitute video tutorials to reading. You need to read up so that you can be grounded in most of this econometric terminology and tools. Read up Asterio and Hall, Gujarati and Potter, Woodridge. These are very simple textbooks. Download journal articles, access internet resources so that you can have more information on how to estimate an ARIMA model. Thank you for staying with me. Support my channel if you have not done so. Subscribe. 
share my videos and my links to your friends, to your students, and to your cohorts. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.